Welcome to From Hardware Simulation to Real Devices with WebAssembly using TinyGo, an entirely too long of a title. I'd like to take one minute of my brief time to thank you organizers, you participants, the sponsors, and all the people involved with this for bringing me back into the real world. It's amazing. I didn't know it was still here. So I am Dead Program. Some humans call me dad, others call me Ron, but the important thing is I am dead program in the internets that matter. Technologist for hire is my title. I was told to be very subtle, so uh, I'm trying that out. Uh, I have a consultancy called the Hybrid Group where we are all technologists for hire, and we write the software for hardware companies, some of which you may have heard of. But today I'm here to talk about TinyGo an amazing project that we've been involved with since its inception. And TinyGo is a Go compiler for small places. Small, like really tiny places. For example, microcontrollers, like Arduinos, and WebAssembly, which is of course why we're all here. So a good size comparison is always good. So let's start with, uh, is anybody here never programmed in Go? Okay, well, we're gonna start with a hello world, which is package main, which says this is our main package, our main unit of code. Our function main, which is our main function. And then we're gonna print line hello world, and that's it. So if we go over here to my terminal, and we go to make hello, let's go make hello run. So this is going to run that same program both in regular standard Go and in tiny Go, and it's got the same output, hello world. Okay, that's good. So now let's say hello build, which is going to actually build them both into binary executables, not just run them, and then make hello size. So the regular Go, that somewhat inconsequential program, is 1.1 megabytes, Whereas the exact same TinyGo program is 67K. Thank you, good night. No. <laughs> Wait, how, how do you do that? Is that even possible? Yes, yes it is possible. So, but what about in the real world? I mean, who's using this? That, that's neat, you just showed me a toy program, dead program, how does, what, what can it really do? Well, first of all, Fermion, or Fermion, as I've discovered they're actually called, <laughs> I live in Spain, so uh, great blog post that just came out about shrinking your tiny Go WebAssembly modules that shrink and shrink and keep shrinking until it just disappears into some sort of quantum superposition. Uh, so cool blog post just came out. They're doing a lot of really cool stuff, and actually they're going to be giving a talk at the end of the day, which I'm really looking forward to. So Suborbital. Very cool company, one of the sponsors. They've been doing all kinds of interesting things. A recent blog post that just came out from Connor Hicks talking about a simple serverless system that's written. And uh, of course, it's got built-in TinyGo support into their command line tools. Then uh, you've been able to use TinyGo in Envoy and Istio for quite some time. This proxy, WebAssembly for Proxies project, you'll notice this very small type seems appropriate. This SDK is powered by TinyGo and does not support the official Go compiler. So it's smaller and yet somehow better in this context. Some people are actually running WebAssembly on physical hardware devices, which I bet you thought is what this talk was about, but it's not. Uh, so they can actually compile the WebAssembly into a binary that can be run right on the hardware itself. There's some books about TinyGo. Tobias Thiel, contributor to TinyGo, an awesome, cool human being, has written an entire book about creative DIY microcontroller projects with TinyGo and WebAssembly. I think I see a pattern forming. And then a recent book that I just acquired myself, Wassam Cooking with Golang, from uh, Philippe, who I think might even be here, although we've never met. Very cool book. Thank you for that. All right. This is not an ad for TinyGo. I mean, if you haven't been convinced yet, you probably hopefully are, but this is actually a talk about simulating hardware using WebAssembly. So the way that we do that currently is with the TinyGo Playground. So if you haven't seen it, the TinyGo Playground is an actual website on the internet at play.tinygo.org, and in the grand tradition of playgrounds, it lets you play with Go code or TinyGo code 
there on the internet. And so we can see our exact same program. And I'll just recompile it by getting rid of the exclamation. And it's compiling it. And it will take a little minute, because it's actually doing it all in the cloud. And so there's my, there's my terminal output. All right, very cool. So, but what about that hardware? So a lot of people have the Arduino Uno hanging around in the desk drawer, or maybe quite a few of them. And so one of the things that we can do is we can actually simulate the hardware itself. So if I go to this Arduino Blink program, how are we doing on time? OK, we've got to keep going. So you'll see here it's got a package main. It's importing the machine package, which is a special package used by TinyGo for the hardware abstraction layer, so we can actually talk directly to the physical device itself. We've defined our LED, which is the built-in LED on most boards. And then our function main, we configure the LED for output. And then in our forever loop, we say LED.low to turn it off, wait for a second. Then LED high to turn it on and sleep for a second. And you can see on this little rendering here in SVG an Arduino Uno board with the thing flashing on it. So that's very interesting. We, but, but Tell me about other boards. What, what are we even seeing? What is this? What is this madness? So when we're running TinyGo on hardware, we're actually running a native binary. And so when we compile it using TinyGo, we compile all of the packages that we would normally be using, and we use the machine package, as I was showing you, to talk directly to the hardware registers. We're running bare metal on the physical hardware. And so when we would compile it, we would use the normal TinyGo compiler and say build with our target of Arduino and our output being a hex file, which is a standard binary format for flashing firmware. But if we're running using WebAssembly in our playground, it's very similar. It's still the same compiler, but instead we're using a JavaScript interface to a WebAssembly module that we just compiled, and we're executing that simulator as a web worker in our browser. And we use the same tiny go build command. The difference here is that our output is now a WASM binary, but it's otherwise it's exactly the same code. So let's take a quick look at an Arduino, or sorry, an Adafruit Circuit Playground Express board, which is actually the same board that I have on um, GopherBot here. And we can take a quick look at how it actually looks. It's a board just like this, kind of circular. And if we go back to our code here, we can see that it's blinking in exactly the same way. It's exactly the same code. I did not change any of the code. We're using the same hardware abstraction layer that TinyGo provides for this low-level hardware, and it's able to blink the built-in LED on any of 70-some-odd you know, different boards. All right, so but what if we want to actually put that onto some physical hardware? Well, by the way, just a quick how this is working. Your program is being compiled using Google Cloud Run in the form of a serverless function through a TinyGo running in a container. And then that can be either compiling it to WebAssembly, as we saw, or it can actually co program and compile the native binary. So if I click on this flash button, it'll actually compile it in the cloud, and then it'll download it. So if we go over to, hopefully I will find it. Let's see if it made it. It's waiting. There's my firmware.uf2, which is a universal format for firmware developed cooperatively with Microsoft, which lets you just flash different boards. And if we go back to, I'm going to double tap my board here so I can put it in the bootloader mode. And then it'll pop up just as a normal mass storage device. And I'll drag my firmware onto it, and it will flash it. And then you can see that it's actually blinking the LED on the board. Amazing. We actually just flashed a board from the internet using WebAssembly built, compiled, all the way down to the physical board itself. It is real. <laughs> so let's do something a little bit fancier. Uh, we have support for many different hardware devices that are not just simple LEDs. For example, RGB LEDs. Yeah, we need those. So if I look at the Circuit Playground Express, it actually has a bunch of built-in LEDs you probably saw on GopherBot's back. And so this program is very, very similar. It uses the standard image color package, the machine package we saw before, the time package, and then 
the WS2812 or NeoPixel driver package, which is some external package that we have for talking to all of the different 70 some odd displays, sensors, and other devices that physical actual devices. And so in this case, we are configuring this WS2812 device and we're changing the LEDs between the red and blue. All right, we put those into the LED display and then we, every 100 milliseconds we rotate. And so you can actually see it here. Well, let's do the same thing now, but let's actually program the board. So I'm gonna download the firmware. I'm gonna jump over here. We'll put it back in the bootloader mode. And then we'll drag the newest firmware onto it. And you can see that Yes, now we're actually running that new firmware with, so we can do a lot of really interesting things and it's all there allowing you to simulate. It works, amazing. You can applaud now. <laughs> all right, so if you want to know more about how this is built, check out the recent blog post from my colleague Ike Van Latum, the original creator of TinyGo. TinyGo preview, how does it work? And that's on this URL. Check us out at tinygo.org. You don't need hardware anymore to hack hardware. You can just do it with the playground. Check us out on Twitter, tinygolang. And I thank you very much. I went one minute over. Sorry, no questions. Uh, see me at the cocktail reception. I'll give you stickers and uh, tell you everything you want to know and more. Thank you.